All right, we got to work out the latest with this president. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Uh, my go-to guy on a lot of things at uh, Washington and uh, security is Timothy Edgar, who is the first cybersecurity director the White House has ever had. Has worked for both Republican and Democratic administrations. Is now at the Watson Institute in uh, at Brown and uh, the author of the book Beyond Snowden, which is something that uh, you really ought to give a read to if you're you know thinking about that juxtaposition between technology and our own individual privacy and uh, all of that stuff kind of weaves in to what we're, we're dealing with right now when it comes to Russia, Putin, the infamous press conference after the two-hour private session, well, nearly private, there were translators, so we'll actually talk about that coming up. Glad to have you in. Thanks very much for tuning in. Here's the latest that we got from CBS. But I would like to clarify. President Trump says he misspoke Monday when he said this about Russian meddling into the 2016 presidential election. President Putin, uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. Tuesday afternoon, amid an avalanche of criticism, the president claimed he meant the opposite. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. Mr. Trump also said he agrees with U.S. intelligence assessments that the Russians did indeed interfere with the U.S. electoral process. I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. Could be other people also. President Trump's remarks in Helsinki ignited a firestorm from coast to coast, some going so far as to label them treasonous. Now his attempt to do damage control is getting mixed reviews. I don't accept the president's comments today. If he wanted to make those comments, he should have had the strength to make them in front of Vladimir Putin. I wish he would have said initially. I'm just glad he clarified it. I, don't, I can't read his intentions or what he meant to say at the time. The president once again denied that his campaign had helped the Russians in their efforts to disrupt the 2016 election. He said his administration is taking steps to prevent interference in the November midterm elections. What, what, what clarification is Marco Rubio talking about, Tim? I, I, I have, yeah. Uh, he just this country. run to thank God he said something about it that we can say uh, is, you know, a reconciliation of what he said the prior day. And uh, please come and change the subject. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. They understood that they got themselves into a big uh, problem with what the president did in that extraordinary and disgraceful press conference. And so the president just comes out and says, black is white, day is night. I didn't say what I obviously said, you know, who you're going to believe me or your lying eyes. And um, I think it's pretty clear. I mean, he was very clear. It wasn't a misspoke, you know, misspeaking. Uh, he said Putin denied the Russian interference. The intelligence community uh, says that there was. And he said, well, I kind of believe Putin, and maybe there's other stuff going on. Uh, that's just a bunch of nonsense. And, and I blame kind of a partisan mindset, a, a feeling that we're a bunch of warring tribes, and that what matters in the Russia investigation is, you know, do you, are you a liberal who watches MSNBC? Or are you conservative that listens to talk radio or watches Fox? Uh, that's nonsense. This is about our country. You know, our country was attacked by Russia. Uh, and it shouldn't matter uh, which side of the partisan football you're on. And I think Trump got himself, president got himself into that partisan uh, way of thinking, and that was part of what was coming out in that press conference. And my goodness, to have that come out with the president of Russia standing next to him, that was a shocker for almost everybody who was looking at it. Sure. Now, you know, I was asking the radio audience, we played the, uh, the cabinet meeting yesterday, you know, five minutes after it was live. So I was watching it live when the listeners were hearing it for the first time. I, I, I almost fell through the microphone. I, I could not believe, and I was asking the question, what was more dangerous? The initial representation at the, at, at, at the briefing in Helsinki 
for this thing on Wooden Wouldn't yeah. that that Marco Rubio is saying, oh, you know, this, uh, whatever, I wish he'd done it before. Done what before? That was th that was not a clarification. Yeah. That was that that was not a revisit. That was uh, and who the heck came up with that? What do you think was worse? Uh, well, I, I still think the initial comment was worse standing next to a foreign leader like that, as we discussed. That's never happened in American history. Uh, we've never had a president of the United States uh, in front of what is basically an adversary or at least uh, a strong, uh, he used the word competitor, a rival, and take their side against our own uh, his own government, his own national security establishment um, that he controls, that he's in charge of. If he thinks that they did something wrong, then he should do something about it. But he doesn't, obviously. Uh, he, so to have that happen on foreign soil in front of another, uh, another leader, a leader of another country, uh, I, I think just rubbed a lot of people the wrong way and for very good reason. Well, rubbing the wrong way and, and creating a dangerous environment are, are, are two different things. Which is it? Well, it, it, it goes worse than, I mean, this wasn't just uncomfortable, this was dangerous. And, and it crossed uh, a lot of different lines. It, it, it caused me to go back and look at the Constitution and what the definition of treason is. Um, and it really comes down to if Russia, was, if Russia is an enemy, then yeah, that is treason. Um, now, we can argue about whether Russia is an enemy or not. Uh, I, I, I tend to think legally, no, you know, uh, but when we're starting to get that close to the line, uh, there's something pretty dangerous that's going on. And it comes down to the first duty of the President of the United States is to defend the Constitution of the United States, not just the country, but the Constitution. And an attack on our electoral process is an attack on all of our constitutional rights, our right to elect our own government. And um, so that is just dereliction of duty, to not defend that process. And we have the intelligence community saying the system is blinking red. Those are the very same words that were used right before 9-11. Uh, and they were deliberately chosen uh, by, I believe, Dan Coates, the director of national intelligence. And for him to come out there and basically say, oh, well, it's probably not Russia, um, when the system is blinking red, when we're about to have elections in November, uh, just a, a terribly disgraceful moment. Well, we have a headline uh, from uh, the Dan Coates statement after, uh, after the Helsinki briefing, he came out with that statement, which reinforced the idea that you know Russian continues, Russia continues, uh, is a responsible and b continues with this behavior. Uh, and it's not it, just it, us. A direct refute to, right. to the president. That's right, and it's pretty extraordinary for a cabinet official. Uh, essentially after the president said, I don't believe what you're doing, I don't believe you're doing the right job, to come out with a statement that basically says, I'm going to continue to do my job, which is what that statement says. It says, we're going to continue to provide objective analysis of threats to our country, including on the issue of Russia and interference in the election. And, uh, you know, essentially that's what the statement says. Um, and so, you know, that that's just sort of strange. You, you sit there and you think, you know, when when does... When do we've seen that before? I don't think we ever have. So this format, and it feels like a format in some ways, where the president says something outrageous. Charlottesville is one of the comparisons, right? He, he does the mutual blame game for yeah. what happened down there. All this feedback comes. He tries to reposition what he says by just saying the sky is black. And then after that, he begins to feel like he resolved the thing, and then he gets on his high horse. This morning on Twitter, he writes, so many people at the higher end of intelligence loved my press conference performance in Helsinki. Putin and I discussed many important subjects at our earlier meeting. We got along well, which truly bothered many haters who wanted to see a boxing match. Big results will come. So, so he's feeling his oats today as if the whole thing is really a smash success. Nothing went wrong, and onward and upward. It, it, it just doesn't work. I, I mean, President Well, it Trump, seems to work for him, well, and it seems, not to, it, it seems not to carry this kind, this kind of direct line of communication through social media with the American public seems to box up the Republican and any other leadership from saying what we know they really think. This is the part that I think is quite dangerous. Uh, this is a threat to the United States. It has nothing to do with liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat. 
And, and actually, one thing that's positive, anything that's positive that came out of this is that it was a slap across our face because it was started to seem like the Russia investigation, you know, the media, people talking about it, it started to seem like, oh, yeah, that's something that people care about if they're partisans. You know, if you're one of these people who wants to impeach Trump uh, or you're one of these people who really defends Trump, then you get into a boxing match about it. And that was very dangerous, that kind of feeling of, you know, it doesn't matter, it's just part of the, the game of politics. No, this is a serious national security threat uh, to our electoral process, and not just ours, but also our allies. Uh, this is part of the playbook that Russia has been playing across Europe and in many other countries of interfering with political process and promoting, not, not promoting your guy. I mean, you might say, some people say, well, I'm glad the Russians supported Trump because I like Trump. Well, uh, they're not supporting Trump because you like Trump or because they agree with Trump's policies. They're supporting uh, whichever side they can to create havoc. And they've done that uh, in many different countries. They've supported far-right candidates. They've supported far-left candidates. In the case of Trump, uh, they had a preference for him over Hillary Clinton. When we come back, we'll talk about the nature of that one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion with Putin. Stay with us. I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. Now, at the uh, ta we tape in early afternoons each day, and uh, we have yet to see the White House briefing. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, I, I, she must have to take double Xanax to get ready for sure. uh, this one with, with the press corps today to, to try to, because you know they're going to try to, you know, who wrote that, you know, who, who came up with that one, was that really the president authentically, you know, looking back on the, at the tape and saying, well, I, I, mean, I think on. it's pretty obvious from, we all saw it, I, I mean, his, his body language, his tone of voice, right. It's clear the he was saying. Of the event. It's yeah. very clear he's saying President Putin denied it, and I I believe him. That's what he was saying, and and he can rewrite history. I mean, one of the problems with uh, serving in this administration, uh, at uh, in a position like Sarah Huckabee Sanders does, is that it puts you in the position of defending the indefensible. And reportedly, and the chief of staff was, uh, if you believe the reports, and they make credible sense to me, he was reaching out to Republican leadership to please squawk, so it would at least you know you know, the feedback loop would come back to the president through the media that he had to do some kind of a clarification. Now, I don't know if that's his solution, coming up the wood wouldn't, uh, crazy, but... Uh, it, it is better than sticking to, I believe, the Russians, but, uh, but it's, still, it's still very disturbing. So, a lot of people now are wondering, based on not feeling any kind of confidence about the truth, what what really happened between Putin and and Trump alone? Now the president has the purview to, to meet with anybody he wants to, right? Right. Uh, but I asked Senator Whitehouse yesterday on the radio on WPRO, what about the translators? You know, they're the only other two people in the room. Given everyone's nervousness about what might have been discussed, are they reachable? Are they draw outable? Whatever. The, the only witnesses are translators. Are they probable? Uh, I have been thinking about this, and I don't think there has ever been a situation in which Congress has had to go to a translator to try to get uh, an assessment of what took place in a private conversation. So I'm aware of no tradition or convention about this. Um, and I think it probably is something that the uh, administration would want to contest and litigate. What do you think? You think you're, yeah. you, I mean, you've got a, a cybersecurity expertise, a Washington expertise, a security expertise. You're not a lawyer. I am a lawyer. You are a lawyer. Yes. I, I, why would I say that to you? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, you're writing the law review. That's I mean, right. It's just, I mean, you are a lawyer. All right. And you're a lawyer. Yes. I feel like Trump. Yes. What I meant to say was, hmm. and you're a lawyer. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, have you thought about this? Uh, yeah. I mean, just looking at it on the face, I think it would be very difficult to subpoena the translators. You've got issues of executive privilege and national security. Um, those can be overcome only on a very specific showing that 
you know, there's a crime, an impeachable offense that you're investigating, and you absolutely need to have that information. You go back to Nixon, and you look at those Nixon tapes, um, very similar issues were being presented there. And the president, you know, has a lot of power. His office gives him a lot of authority and responsibility. Um, the, the Electoral College, you know, we elected him through the Electoral College, entrusted that authority to President Trump. A and to me, this is getting back to another point that I was making earlier, which is uh, we've got to get out of our, you know, I'm defending Trump, I'm attacking Trump, I want Trump to go, I want Trump to stay, and, and, and take a bigger picture here. This is not about a partisan food fight. Uh, this is not about, you know, are we going to be able to impeach the president and get rid of him or not. This is about uh, dealing with a serious threat to the United States and um, the failures that we've seen from President Trump in dealing with that threat are, 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 to me, the most disturbing thing. The fact that he doesn't take it seriously. Why in the world wouldn't you want to have people in the room with, with you with Putin? That just doesn't make any sense. It's to protect the president to have other people there, your own translators, your own aides, to make sure that other people know what was said, that other people know what Putin said, what you said. Uh, and so it just doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's, it's incompetent to go into a high-level meeting like that he without protecting yourself. He thinks it's absolutely wheelhouse. He just feels like it's, 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 it's the, it's the kind of you know, uh, the nature of his game, and he's the, you know... It's a classic mistake that many presidents have made. Uh, I, I think Americans tend to be very open, tend to think, well, I can go and sit down with this guy and, you know, have a beer with him and we can solve all of our problems. That is not the way foreign leaders work when they are adversaries of the United States. Uh, you're not going to get in a room with them and just uh, hash it out. Uh, and you go back in history, there have been many examples. Uh, probably one of the more recent ones, George W. Bush, saying, I looked into Putin's eyes and saw that we could work with him. Uh, no, you didn't. And, and uh, it was John McCain who said, yeah, he should have looked into his eyes and seen three letters, KGB. And, and, and when you're dealing with a, an old uh, Russian spy, which is what Putin is, uh, you protect yourself. You, you get some people in the room with you. That's just common sense. I don't understand why President right. Trump doesn't see it. All right, well, he doesn't see it. I don't understand a lot of things about President Trump, but it's spilt milk, right? So yeah. you see no remedy. You see, uh, you see... Not without some very specific reasons why you would need to know that exact Young Congressman Kennedy actually called for subpoenas today yeah. of the translators. I think, to your point, you've got to be very... It's, it's okay to wonder about it and ask about it, it's another thing to call for subpoenas without really thinking through. And this is what charges up this thing you worry about, yeah. which is this left, right, partisan I think that's right. playbook execution. Right? I think that's right. I think the Democrats need to be careful not to seize on every mistake and use it as a weapon against the president. Uh, yes, of course this is a huge mistake. Of course it makes sense to point it out. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that our elections in November are safe and secure from potential Russian meddling. We need to do something to deter that. Um, and, we need, and when the president goes off in a crazy direction, uh, we need to impose some kind of, of, of criticism against him, have a check and a balance against him. Those are the big picture things we need to worry about, not about let's score some political points. Um, and, and that's, I think, part of what got Trump sucked into this narrative, uh, which is a, an alternate reality that Putin is our friend, this is all a deep state conspiracy against Trump. None of those things are true, but they serve that partisan football uh, conversation that we want to get away from. When we come back, what can we do to learn more about what happened in Helsinki? Stay with us. So what do you think, uh, Professor Edgar, what, what, what do you think can and should be done to extract more information about what the United States and Russia spoke about, either individually with the presidents, the two presidents, and or with the team? Uh, shouldn't the Republican-controlled Congress be speedballing some kind of, of review here? Sure. Look, we need a healthy interbranch tension. I gave you some examples of the White House and the legal powers and responsibilities that they have. Uh, but the Senate has an oversight responsibility here, and what we've seen, I think, is a lot of silence from people who know a lot better. And they're doing it, again, for the partisan reasons we're talking about. Uh, oh, I don't want to go after my guy. Uh, well, this is a lot more important than that. You know, you were elected to the Congress. 
in order to provide a check on the president, whether it's your party or another person's party. And when something this serious happens, involving our relations with you know, one of the most powerful countries in the world and involving a threat to our democracy and our constitution, you have a, a responsibility to push hard on the executive branch. What was said in those meetings? Why do you think we can have a decent, why in the world would you propose a, an exchange of Russian intelligence agents to look at cyber issues when they're the ones that we are trying to protect ourselves against. That's a crazy idea. Why did it come up in your head? Uh, why didn't you reject it? These are all questions well, it, it that didn't Congress come up should in his be asking. It was Putin that suggested it. Sure. He thought it was a great idea. Sure. It, it's, Don't you want to know, though, what Pompeo and, and Coates and God knows who else you want to throw into the loop here are thinking about that kind of dialogue. Absolutely, and it is absolutely the Congress's responsibility to haul every one of those people up, ask them those tough questions and hearings, and they're required to answer it. You know, those, those agencies are answerable directly to the Congress for uh, oversight of our foreign policy, and, and it would be uh, criminal not to uh, engage in that kind of oversight. Uh, I, I think that's one of the disappointments of the past year and a half. Uh, has been we heard rhetoric from many Republicans during the campaign, including Republicans who voted for Trump, well, this is a different kind of president, but we're going to be here to provide a check and a balance, and we really haven't seen that. So uh, talk to me, by the way, I just before I uh, make sure that you pick up the book, uh, Beyond Snowden, how's, how's, how's it going? Is it going it's well? It's going well. I yeah. think a lot of people are uh, enjoying that book. It, it, it provides a balanced view of an issue that uh, a lot of people are either on firmly on one side or the other. Uh, which is how do we balance our security needs and our privacy in an age of mass surveillance. So how do we balance the ongoing Mueller investigation, a 29-count indictment that comes in on 12 Russian officials, and that becomes part of this uh, soccer ball, literally, uh, in Helsinki. Uh, the timing of that was interesting, right in front of the summit. You thought that, do you think that was purposeful? Uh, or don't just the know, way it rolls? but if it was purposeful, the point was to deter the Russians from engaging in this kind of behavior, and that is one of the reasons that the press conference was such a disaster. What we needed was we needed the president pushing that agenda you know, going all thrusters towards, hey, you shouldn't do this. And he just threw this. it back. He did, he undermined the effect. There's, there's a, you know, there's a disagreement among many scholars about how effective is indicting these people who will almost never be arrested. Uh, is Other it than useful? Maria Butina, who is, who is right That's here, right. Right That's here right. on campus. But right? the people who are in Moscow, you know, is it worth it? Um, but if it is worth it, then the purpose is to deter, to shame, to deter, to say, we know you did it. We're going to name you. We're going to say, if you're, if you're caught anywhere, we're going to arrest you. Uh, and in order to have that deterrence effective, you need to follow it up with presidential leadership that says, yes, we wanted to indict those people. This was a terrible thing. I talked to President Putin about it. I told him he knows where we stand. That's what we needed to hear from the president. And obviously, we heard the exact opposite. All right. Well, we'll see if uh, anybody steps up, and we'll check back with you. Thanks. Appreciate sure. it. Wow, huh? I'll tell you what's next next. Tomorrow night here, Dan McGowan will check in with all things going on in Providence. Uh, I, you know, Terry Hassett, a longtime counselor, didn't get his signatures in and is now disqualified from the election. That's an oops. I'm sure Dan will have lots of Providence stuff for us tomorrow, so we'll check in with him. In the meantime, we'll see you on the radio tomorrow at 3 on WPRO. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.